I want to talk a little bit about these uh, appearances you do on these local morning shows. Mm. Uh, Howard has this thing where he loves to play news flubs and different anchors and whatnot. Every time you do these appearances, it, 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 the impression is that you're intentionally making them awkward, right, Sam? Yeah. So what happened was I, it happened in Pittsburgh. I did a show called uh, Pittsburgh Today Live, and this was the one that really went viral. It started my bad behavior because I realized it was like people liked it. So I was like, oh, now I'm like looking forward to doing this. They kept that. They clearly they didn't know research who I was. They never care about this shit. So I was like, well, if you don't care, why should I? So she goes, uh, so when did you decide you want to be funny? Did you only think I might be, you might be funny. And I, and I just went, no, I didn't know. But when I was young, my, my uncle molested me and he was funny. And, uh, and then I, I caught his powers like in Spider-Man, you know, and, uh, and they just froze and, uh, and she goes, well, I, I don't know what to do with that. And it just went viral. And I was like, oh, I guess I could, I could ruin these problem is I ruined a bunch for a while and then word gets around and then no one wants you on. So I was like, holy shit, I found this good thing I could do. But yeah, we just did one in Salt Lake and the guy. Now the weird thing is they know I'm going to do it. So if they have me on, it's either like a booker who hates their boss and wants to get fired or they're like just a fan and like, this will be funny, but it could be, you know, or it's someone who's done no research, which is what you hope. What was the most uncomfortable moment after it ends? Like it ends and then you're sitting there. Oh, it's brutal. Are, are they like when they, when you told the molestation story, they go, did somebody come to you and go, what the fuck? Yeah, I got, I was leaving and they were pissed. And I said to the producer, can I get a copy of that uh, set? And they go, get out. <laughs> and I, I always say it's like a bank robbery. You need a car waiting for you. Like I, I call an Uber usually as I'm going on to the set, just so it's waiting so I can just run out of there. But, um, we, yeah, we did one in Utah and I just kept bringing up P Diddy and he was like, well, we're not going to talk about that. I was like, I know. Right. Anyway, P Diddy, I just kept doing it. And he got so annoyed. He was really pissed at the end. He was like in the segment, he's like, well, you'll never be back on this show. And the female anchor was cool. She was like, he might be back. And he's like, no. And then after just all that P Diddy shit, it just cuts, it goes, it just uh, says good morning, Salt Lake. It's like the greatest cutaway ever. Another big one was in Columbus where I kept telling them they have a human trafficking problem. I was just, you just think of shit to say that you're like, what's going to be weird. And for some, you also, you like, you throw out like little jabs and you see what hits. And for some reason that really bothered this anchor, I guess he had like a lot of Columbus pride and he's like, that's not true. And I was like, I heard, I heard it's really bad there. And he's like, that's not, that's made up. And I was like, no, I don't think it is. And he's like, well, what do you, what, he's like, what can we expect? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what you can expect is uh, human trafficking because I wouldn't bring that to your city. You know, and I just kept doing that. And at the end, when they signed off with me, he's like, I don't know why he kept talking about trafficking. And he's like, had like this like breakdown. And I was like, holy shit, I like broke a guy. <laughs>